I hope you guys had a good Easter. Did you guys have a good Easter? Yeah. We, it, was a, it was a great time. This is my first Easter with, as a dad of two. Uh, I am a hashtag girl dad, and so uh, we have a lot of fun. Uh, El, my, uh, Macy's first uh, Easter, which is pretty good. Um, I hope you had a great time this last Easter. And Easter is it's always amazing, because Easter is, we, you know this, because you just probably came to church and uh, did something. Um, but Easter is the time where we celebrate the fact that Jesus, 2,000 years ago, actually rose from the grave. And thousands of years before this, the entire world was leaning towards the fact that one day there would be someone to come to save us, to help us, to make us new. And they were leaning forward to this time. And then we had this event of Jesus. And ever since then, we are leaning back on this historical event that happened. Even in the Old Testament, the Old Testament, if you read it in context, everything is facing towards the coming of a Messiah. And all the New Testament, everything that was written over here was, is leaning back. It's either the Gospels talking about what actually happened, and then all the, the epistles and the letters, they're actually leaning back on the event that Jesus actually rose from the dead. The resurrection changes everything. Jesus' re- return from death to, to life again is the linchpin of history. It's the hinge of history. Everything is based on this thing. It's incredible. And the fact that Jesus came is, is one of those things that is, is unbelievable. And now, you and I, we get to live in the time in history where we get to live life after the resurrection. We get to live a life after the resurrection. You know, Easter is, is come and gone, and, and you know, we celebrate all, all the different things. And what's, what's awesome about Easter is it's a time where it, it kind of like outlines and highlights Jesus to a lot of different people who usually maybe don't care as much. I know that churches all around the world get a bump in engagement and attendance and people uh, being aware of the story on Easter Sunday. Just this past weekend at, at, here at Cross Point on our Easter services, we had, uh, we had 1,253 people on campus, which is super cool. And we had, we had like several people take their next steps. You can clap for that. That's pretty awesome. Listen, we had several people take their next step in the relationship with Jesus, and that's awesome. Like, we celebrate the fact that there are people here who are not normally here to hear this message of hope. But here's what we know, because we had Easter last year, and the year before, and the year before, and the year before. Here's what we know. The people, a lot of the times, the people that come to Easter one week, they may not be back the next week. You guys know this? And listen, I'm, I'm so glad that they, they were here. And listen, they, 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 were, they were here and they got to hear this message of hope. And, and they got to hear that, that like actual transformation in this life is possible. They'll hear about the resurrection. But sometimes a lot of people, maybe you've been one of them, I've been one of these people, they will hear this message of hope and they'll be like, yeah, that sounds awesome. And then they'll go home and they'll forget about it. It reminds me of one of my favorite uh, little parables. This is called the duck parable. Have you guys ever heard this? Um, bear with me if you guys, uh, this, is, this is pretty fun. It says this, the duck parable. It says, there is a town where only ducks live. And every Sunday, the ducks waddle out of their houses and they waddle down to Main Street to their church. They waddle into the sanctuary and they squat on the proper pews. And the duck choir paddles, uh, paddles and in and takes its place. Then the duck minister comes in forward and opens the duck Bible. And he reads to them. He says, ducks, God has given you wings. With your wings, you can fly. With wings, you can mount up like eagles and soar. No walls can confine you. No fence can hold you. You have wings. God has given you wings and you can fly like a bird. And to that, all the ducks shouted, Amen. And then they waddled home. You guys got it? This is sometimes the way you have experienced church life to be. This is times like, this might be similar to what you've experienced. I know this is similar to what I've experienced because I have had times in my life where I've gone to church and I've heard some amazing thing about God, like this revelation about God, like who God is, his character, what he is uh, inviting us towards. And I'm like, yes, yes awesome. I want that. Amen, brother. Like, I'm into this. And then you know what will happen a lot of times? I'll go home, and I'll turn on YouTube. And I get in, like, this weird YouTube pit of, like, watching a bunch of people cook meat 
on the grill in a smoker. And I just do that for like hours. And then I get to like, you know, random, you're just, you're just like, what, how did I get, have you guys ever gone like a YouTube like deep dive? And you're like, how did I get to where I'm at? This is insane. And then I'll, you know, I'll go to bed and I'll wake up and I'll go to work. And then I kind of forget what this, like this big cool thing that I just remembered. And then I'll go to church the next week and I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. I'm into that. This is, I'm, God, you're amazing. I want to do this. I want to serve you. I want to be transformed by you. And then I'll go home and I kind of get in the same rut and then I like forget. Have you guys ever done that? Have you guys ever like felt that? You're like maybe you've gone to church and you're like, man, this is, oh, man, I'm going to, this is amazing. I'm going to do this. And then we go home and we forget. Sometimes when you're around something so much, you can kind of like get numb to its like an incredible like it, how good it is. And we can even do this with Easter sometimes where we're gonna be like, man, the resurrection is amazing. That's awesome. I gotta go back to my own life. Like I gotta, I gotta go back to doing whatever I'm doing. Like I gotta, I gotta go back to like my work, my school. Like that's, that's amazing. I'm, I'm excited to come out and do this, but I gotta do, I gotta do back, I gotta go back to what I, what I want. And listen, the resurrection of Jesus it has not only made it possible for you to have a connection with God and to be with God forever in heaven after you die, the resurrection of Jesus is actually the source of an incredible amount of blessing and purpose and meaning and direction and transformation in your life if you actually lean on it, if you want it. And so tonight, what I want to do, and the title of my talk is just Life After the Resurrection. And what I want to do tonight is to talk about one of the ways that life after the resurrection should be different for you if you actually believe in Jesus. You know, if you're one of those people who is leaning on the historical event of the resurrection and trust that Jesus is the Son of God and you put your faith in him and, and you turn to him, then the Life after the resurrection should result in boldness. It should result in boldness. You know, boldness, boldness is the thing that, like, it, it gets you to act. It gets you to do something. And following God is impossible without the Holy Spirit of God actually emboldening us to do what he says for us to do. And boldness is an essential part of being a Christian. And really, boldness is is an essential part of being a human. Have you you realized that kind of fortune favors the bold? Have you heard of this? Uh, Like, guys, I'll give you an example. Guys, if you want a girlfriend, um, you got to be bold. You got to, you got to, at some point, work up the courage with all boldness to say, hey, you want to go on a date with me? You know, like that's a terrifying thing at some point. Um, I remember when I uh, decided that I was going to ask out my wife, Kyla. Um, It was at a young adult event, you know, in my hometown of Springfield, Missouri. And um, we had, it was after one of the gatherings, we had a bonfire. And so like we were at the bonfire. And guys, have you ever like done this where you're like working up the courage like all day to like work yourself up to ask this person out? And you're just like, okay, I'll do it now. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait like five minutes. I'm going to wait like five minutes. You're like, okay, I'm ready. Nope. We'll just wait just a little bit longer, a little bit longer. And so I was like doing this. I was like, I'm like, I'm like waiting for the perfect situation. And like it was never coming. And then um, it was like towards the end of the night. And Kyla and her roommate were like, all right. We're, and I was like talking to her. I'm like, ooh, I'm vibing. We're vibing. We're doing good. Like this is awesome. And then she goes, all right, well, we're leaving. And I'm like, no, no, no. I needed, I needed, I needed to do this. I needed to ask you on a date. And so I was like, I was like, just like trapped by fear. And then in a moment, like she was like from me to right over here and like everyone was still around. And so I just was like, I'm like, I had a choice. I'm like, am I going to be bold? Am I going to try to ask her out? And so I said, hey, Kyla. And it was almost as if I said, everyone turn your attention to me. Because every, there's probably just, just about as many people as there are right here. They turned around and like the, like the music stopped. Like, why is the music stopping? You know, like, and everyone just turned around and they're like, mm-hmm. And I'm like, um, um. And I'm like, here we go. This is your opportunity. Are you going to do it? Are you going to be bold? Are you going to, you know, whatever. And I'm like, hey, do you want to get coffee this week? And, sh- and she's like, what, when? And I'm like, and everyone just like, everyone looks at her like, is she going to say yes? 
And, and then I, I'm like, I'm like started to walk towards her. And then I, you know, I was, you know, so nervous. And so I was like, uh, you know, I was like, hey, and we kind of started walking towards each other. And I was like, I was like, get these people out of here. Um, do we, uh, we just do this, this Friday? She goes, I can't this Friday. I'm like, okay, we can, if we don't want to do this Friday, it's no, no problem. We can do it like another day. We can just like, uh, we can just like, and I like try to like start figuring out all the details. Like, it's a wonder I got married people. Like, it's, um, and she's like so much cooler than me. Like, that's not super hard, but she is. And um, like, and, and she's like, listen, we'll, we can work it out. Just text me. And I'm like, that's, that's a smart idea. That's a smart, we'll work it out later. That's perfect. So we got married and have two kids. So that worked out. <laughs> Um, but listen, in that moment, you haven't, I had an opportunity, like, am I going to be bold? I'm going to, like, step out in faith and, like, uh, that I might get rejected in front of a bunch of people. Um, but if you want something significant to happen in your life, you got to be bold. You got to do it. Boldness is the ability to spark change in a situation that seems bleak. And listen, my dating life was bleak, let me tell you that. And maybe you're in a situation where, like, I just want, I just, like, want my... I want the current situation that I'm in, I want it to change. Like maybe you're like in the same rut that you've been in for a while and you're just like, I don't know what else to do. You know what you need? You need some boldness in your life. Boldness is the, is the little definition, is the willingness to take risks and act in it innovatively, confidence or courage. And so tonight, I want to tell you something. I want to talk about boldness and boldness not in the way just to ask people out, but if you can ask, guys, if you want to ask some girls out, that'd be awesome. Do that. Like, get the courage to do that. But I want to, give, I want to tell you what the resurrection, life after the resurrection, what kind of boldness that requires from people who actually believe it. And I want to give you two ways that you can be bold in light of the resurrection today. So the first way that I think that we can be bold um, after, with life after the resurrection is the boldness to come to God. The boldness to come to God. In Ephesians chapter 3, verses 11, 12, it says this. It says this. Uh, this was according to the eternal purpose that he has realized in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through our faith in him. It says in him, in, in Jesus, because of Jesus, we have boldness, we have access and we have confidence through our faith in him. You know, I, know, I talk to so many people who have an incorrect view of God, where they say things just like, man, I just feel, I just feel like God doesn't want me. Or I, I feel like I've messed up too much for God. Or I feel like, man, I've just, I've made some mistakes. Or have you, have you done this if you're a Christian? And you're like, man, I just, I've sinned a lot lately. So I just need, I'm not going to talk to God for like at least a week of me not sinning. Or like a day, I, I, I need to give God like a day. Because I can't come to him in the state that I'm in now. Like I just, I need, to, I need to stop for a little bit and kind of have some time separation between me and God before I can come back to God. Have you ever done that before? Am I the only one? Listen. This is a sheepish view of God, where you, God's over here and you're over here, and you're just like, ah, sorry, no, no, no one bother you. And, and listen, we, this, is, this is the view of God that lacks confidence because you actually think that your sin that you're in right now is something that is too much for God's grace to handle. Have you heard the expression, have you, have you invited somebody to church and be like, oh, if I came into that building, them walls probably are falling down if I walk in, right? Like, have you heard that? that? That's a person who doesn't really understand who God is. They don't really understand what God has come here to do. Like, this is, if you have faith in Jesus, if, if you, like, actually have been saved by Jesus, you actually, Scripture says, you should have boldness to use your access to God to come to him with confidence, to come to him with confidence. This is, this is insane, guys. Like, do you know that most world leaders, you can't just come up to them unannounced? Do you know this? Like, try just walking up to the president of the United States uh, and just to try to talk to him. Like, it's not going to go well for you, you know? Um, you know, this, is, this has been the case kind of throughout a lot of history. Uh, you know that even in uh, the, the ancient world, that we have, we have uh, this book in the Bible named Esther in, in the Old Testament, and Esther was the wife of the king. And Esther actually prays, like she wants to ask her husband something. 
And it's like, if Kyla wanted to ask me something, I'm like, why are you making a big deal? Why are you just ask me? What are you talking about? But back then, it was such a big deal that you wouldn't just go to your king, even if he is your husband, and ask him that she actually prays that God, you could actually be killed if you go to the king unannounced. You could like, there, there's a lot of stipulations, and Esther was praying, God, can you please help him? Like, help, give me favor with my husband, the king, so he doesn't kill me. I just want to ask him this thing. Like, this is kind of the normal standard operating procedure of people in power. Like, you can just walk up to him. But God, who is ultimate power, ultimate authority, who is, is so perfect and righteous and holy, and you're so over here with your sin and stuff like that, because of the resurrection, you have access to God because Jesus, he took your sin, and he gave you his righteousness. So when God looks at you, he doesn't see your sin. He sees you through the righteousness of Jesus. So he's, there's a connection between you and God. That's how this works. So what this verse is saying in Ephesians is that in him, we have boldness to go to God. We have, we have boldness and we have access to have access to the creator of the universe who can transform your life, who can save you, who that thing, the situation that you're in right now, he has a plan for it. He wants to use that thing to grow you. He wants to help you and to give you his presence and the supernatural peace in whatever you're going through, whatever situation that you're in. God wants to be with you. He wants it. And so the only, if that's the case, if God did all of this to bring Jesus here, to die for us, to give us, the only reason that we would be separated from God at that point is because we choose it. We choose it. So now, if you're like the way I, I can act sometimes, I'm like, oh God, I want I, I to I gotta take some time off. I don't want to come to you right now. I'm embarrassed to come to you. God's looking at you and saying, no. My, my grace is sufficient for you. I have power to, to forgive you. Just come to me. I want to bless you. I want to forgive you. I want to embrace you. I want you so bad. And listen, my son Jesus paid for it. You have access to me. Come with boldness. Don't be afraid. Don't, don't wait in like this sheepish attitude towards me. Come with boldness. Go for it. Like Go, go, go get it. This is what we need to be doing. And so tonight, I just need to remind some of you who are in here today, maybe you are saved, you've been saved by God. You need to stop creating barriers that are unnecessary. Stop doing it. Because the only thing that hurts is you. Because God wants to bless you. He wants to forgive you. He wants to be with you. This is who our God is. And so some, some things that you probably need to start being more bold when coming towards God, you need to start going boldly before God to confess sin. You, just, you need to come to him. And this, is, this may be a prayer that, you, that you're like tired of praying, but you need to do it and be like, God, I'm here again. God, I'm sorry. I don't know why I keep doing this. I know this is wrong, but I keep doing it. God, would you help me? Would you, I'm so sorry. But God, I know that your grace is sufficient for me. Can you, and you tell me to be bold, so I'm being bold. Would you, would you help me? Would you forgive me? God will be there for you. He will forgive you always. For, for some of you, you need to come to him and be like, God, I... I need to be bold to come to you. I, need, I have a situation in my life where it's difficult, it's hard, it's a, it's a financial thing, it's a relational thing, it's a, it's a, it's, I don't know what I'm going to do with my job, I don't do with it, whatever. Like, you, you, God wants you to come with boldness to him and ask him his opinion. He wants you to do it. He wants to be with you. He wants to like infuse his spirit in you. He wants to have you walk by the spirit and be different than anyone. Like, he wants to bless you. And maybe you need to hear and you just need to come to God and be like, God, I just need more of you in my life. I feel kind of stagnant. I feel like, I don't know, God, I just need more of you. You have the boldness to come to God because life after the resurrection means that you have the opportunity and the access and the confidence to go boldly before our Father. So are you coming boldly to God? If you want to grow as a Christian, if you want to grow in your relationship with God, you gotta, you got to be bold. you got to come before him. And the second way that we can be bold in life after the resurrection is you can be bold to obey. Bold to obey. See, right after Jesus was, uh, was raised to life again and he appeared to hundreds of people and then he was raised up literally like in the sky to heaven, 
um, he gave the mandate to tell everybody about what I just did to make disciples. And so the disciples of Jesus actually did it. Like they turned the world upside down. It was amazing. And it was a really, it was a really interesting time in this Roman occupied Jerusalem and Judea. Like it's, it, was, it was insane. And what was happening is the religious powers, the, the religious Jewish people were actually the ones who killed Jesus. And so they didn't like what Jesus was saying. And then all of a sudden they did it, they won. But then the disciples that were just like terrified and scattered just a few days earlier are now out in droves and they are telling people that Jesus lives. Like it's insane. And so they were doing this and they were like at the day of Pentecost, it said that like 3,000 people were saved. Like boom, an instant mega church. All, all of a sudden you're like, you're just a bunch of people following the Lord all together. That's insane. And so like the, 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 the whole area was like turned upside down and the religious leaders did not like this. Like these are the same people who killed Jesus and he did nothing wrong. And so what happened was these people, they, the religious leaders got all the disciples together and they said, stop speaking about Jesus. Don't say anything else about him. No more, no more. Again, these are the people who killed Jesus. And the disciples, it says, we're going to read some in Acts chapter 4, verse 23. So if you have your Bibles, turn there. They, they told them not to preach about Jesus anymore. And then they were let out because they wanted to like punish them or do some more. But because of all the, the people who agreed with them, they're just like, we're not going to mess with this. We're just going to let them go. And hopefully they'll stop proclaiming this message. And this is what it says in Acts chapter 4, verse 23. It says, when they were released, they went to their friends and reported what the chief priests and elders had said to him, said to them. And when they heard it, they lifted their voices together to God and said, sovereign Lord, who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them, who through the mouth of our father David, your servant by the Holy Spirit, and then he quotes back from the Old Testament, why did the Gentiles rage? Why did the people plot in vain? Then the kings of the earth set themselves and rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against the anointed one. He's calling back on when David talked about he was getting persecuted. And then it says in verse 27, they're praying. They said, for truly in this city, they were gathered together against your holy servant, Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, which are like the leaders of the, of the Roman uh, area of that time, along with the Gentiles and all the people of Israel to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. They're talking about God, all this stuff has happened. Like you set everything in motion. People are against us. It's difficult. And now 29 happens. Verse 29 happens. And if you want to see someone who understands adequately what life after the resurrection is all about, listen to the words of the apostles of Jesus. And now, Lord, look upon their threats and grant your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness, while you stretch out your hand to heal, and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And when they had all prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they continued to speak the word of God with boldness. You know, this is an incredible scene right here. Just, just remember, these disciples, just a few days earlier, when, they, when Jesus was arrested, they scattered. They were terrified. They even went back to their old jobs and old professions because they're like, well, that was a fun couple years. We're not this, um, we thought Jesus was it, but he wasn't. And these are the men who in the face of like real persecution, guys, like death, all church history, um, says that all of the apostles were killed, were brutally killed. And one was just left, was dropped in a vat of uh, like burning stuff and then left on an island to die. That was the only one who like didn't get murdered, but kind of, if you think about it. Um, these are the guys, if, if I'm them, just it kind of be like really real, real quick. Like if I'm them and people are coming at me because of what I believe, this is what I'm praying for. I'm saying, I'm saying, hey God, um, can, can you, I want to pray that these people will be nicer to me. Can you make these people nicer to me? Like I'm doing, I'm working for you. Like it would be awesome if you could just kind of do that for me. Or like, God, would you like, could you like defeat 
my enemies for me real fast so I can do what you've called me to do? Like, I need, I need you to come in and, like, separate some, I need, I need you to, like, unseat some power structures here, God. Can you do that for me? Or, like, God, can you, I, I need you just, like, can you prevent trouble from ever becoming, like, on us? Like, that would be great. These men did not pray for that. They actually prayed for boldness in the face of that. Because these men knew they followed Jesus, and when Jesus was here, he actually said in John chapter 16, verse 33, he told them, he says, I told you this so that you may have peace in me, that here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. These disciples are remembering what Jesus said, and so when they look upon their opposition, because Jesus actually told them to do this, and there was like direct opposition against that, so they're looking at them, and they're saying, God do not fix the situation. I don't think it's bad to pray for that. But they said that in this moment, they said, God, in light of all of these things, give us boldness so that we can tell more people about you. This is life after the resurrection. This is life that's so different than anything else. This is a life that says, where we remember Jesus saying, take heart. I know your life is difficult. I know there are people against you. I know that you, you might even try to be obeying me and doing things for me, and it's hard, and there are things coming against you, but can I tell you that I'm going to be with you? Like, take heart. Like, be encouraged, because I've overcome the world. I, I've done it. And it may not be perfect. In fact, it probably won't be perfect. If they kill Jesus, what do you think they're going to do with his followers? You know what I'm saying? Like, what are we to think that it's going to be all like daisies and roses for us, you know, that we follow Jesus? No, it's, it's never promised that. But life after the resurrection, it shows us that we need to be bold enough to obey God even when it's hard. Even when it's hard. Some of you only want to be bold for God when things are going good for you. You know, we serve a God who even though we're going through the fire, he's actually, he, he will actually give, be able to give us boldness so that we can be courageous and confident to know that God will be with us. So we can take heart. Maybe today you're here and you're like, man, I got, I got struggles, I got things, I got stuff going on in my life. Like, I can't even tell some people about certain things going on. Go boldly to God. Go boldly to him. That, that dark corner of your heart that you don't want to tell people about, that you're kind of like shielding, maybe even from your parents, maybe some of your best friends, that you're just like, yeah, they just don't get me. They don't understand me. Um, God knows about it. And what he wants you to do so bad is just to uncover it. And say, God, I don't, know, I don't know what to do with this. Because of what the resurrection did, it gives you bold access to the Father. So you need to do that. Maybe you need some, to remember that no matter what situation that you're in, and it's causing some hardship and pain, that you need to remember to go to the Lord and just obey what he says, even if it's difficult. Like, this is what you need to be doing as a follower of Jesus. So I, in closing, I just want to encourage you all to be bold. To be bold. And I think one of the best ways that you can like consistently be bold and like to be, try to grow in, 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 in light of the resurrection of Jesus is to actually like stay plugged into a community of other people. You know, it's really important like, when, you, when you're locked in with, like, a group of brothers and sisters, man, there's something special about that. Like, there's something, like, unique about that. Like, when you, when you be like, man, I'm going through that same thing. Like, man, I, I just had that same struggle. Or I, man, I, God, I'm just struggling with this. And, like, if I go back to, my, if I go back to like, my, my YouTube hole, like, by myself, like, isolated, like, it's harder for me, but it's easier when I'm around people. That's on purpose because God made us creatures that were meant to do life with each other. We all have this desire for embodied presence we got to be with people. So if you want to be emboldened to, to come to the Lord and obey what he says, you got to be around other people who follow Jesus. And then the second thing, you got, you got to you regularly connect with God. 
you got to do it. So today, I want to give you three challenges, three areas that maybe you don't know where to start to be bold. And you're like, man, I got a lot of things, I got a lot of areas, but can I just give you like, I'll give you three ideas of ways that you can be bold this week. Are you ready for them? The first way that you can be bold this week is you can be bold in your invitations. You can be bold in your invitations. You know what you can do? You can invite people to your group. You can invite people to your small group. You can invite people to the gathering. You can invite people to church. You can invite people to like, hey, can I, let me have you, can we go to coffee? I'd love to hear out like what you, like what do you believe about God? Like invite people into this conversation. Invite people in. Like maybe if you're like, that sounds terrifying. Invite people to, get to, to church to, to tonight, to the gatherings. Like invite people to, like maybe you don't know exactly know what to say. Just like get them to come here and we'll, we'll talk to them. We'll, we'll have these spiritual conversations. Maybe you're in here and you're like, you have friends who are experiencing tension, trouble, or transition. And they're just like, man, I'm just having a hard time. You need, your antenna needs to go up and you need to be like, you need to come with me to church. Like, hey, you need to come with me to my small group. Like, hey, you need to come with me to Tuesday nights here at Young Adults. Like, you got, I got I to gotta bring you. Because the stuff that you're looking for, the hope and the peace and stuff that you're looking for, maybe you just try it out. What do you got to lose? You can be bold in your invitations. So just be aware of that. Maybe uh, um, the second thing you need to be bold in is to, bold, to be bold in your serving. To be bold in your serving. Um, you know, in a couple weeks, or the week from the Saturday, we have an opportunity to serve uh, the widows of our church. And I can't think of like a more spot on uh, way that we can do what exactly the Bible says. The Bible says like, uh, you know, to take care of the orphans and widows and like we actually will be helping out uh, taking care of the widows. Like this is, a, this is like an opportunity for you to be bold in serving the Lord and obeying God. Like this is a, like when every time you serve, it's, it, it's the joy of the Christian life. Like to do that, you can serve. You know, in, in a couple weeks also, we're going to be uh, talking about and promoting uh, an on-ramp into serving that will make it clear how to serve here at Young Adults. And it'll be like this, uh, kind of like this cohort that we can come together and we can grow together and serve together. It's, it's going to be amazing. We're going to talk about it here in a couple weeks. Because you're never more like Jesus when you serve. And when God, when he emboldens you to do something, remember the spiritual life always flows out. So when he emboldens you to do something, it's often to reach out to somebody, to invite somebody, to bless somebody. So I want you to be bold in your invitations, bold in your serving, and then lastly, I want you to be bold in your praying. You gotta be bold in your praying. What if you actually pray that God would give you opportunities to do those first two things? What if you actually did it? You know, there's one time I was, I was walking around this park and I was like praying for this very thing. I was like praying for an opportunity to like be a light in life to people around me. And um, I was like praying for opportunities to like invite people and engage with people and have spiritual conversations with people. And I was just like, you know, have you ever gotten those moments where you're just like praying with yourself? And like, I'm a big, wa- I, when I'm on the phone, I pace, you know, so like I like to walk and talk. And so I'm like walking around and I'm like, God, can you just like, could you like give me opportunities to like, uh, in, like reach out to people and invest in people and invite people. And then I'm like praying and I'm like trying to be changed because I want to be different. I want to be more like that because I'm not like normally like that. Like I want to be more like that. And then all of a sudden, this is a couple years ago, and all of a sudden I looked up and there's this guy by himself playing basketball. And I was just, and it was almost as if God was being like, over there. And I was just like, okay, God, can you give me just a, an opportunity to do this? And I look over and I'm like, God, that's weird if I just walk up to someone. Pro- give me like another opportunity to do this. I will do it if you just give me another opportunity. And I just felt in that moment, I'm like, <clears throat> Robbie, are you going to actually do what you're praying? Like I'm literally giving you what you are asking for. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, and so like I sheepishly walk up to this guy and I'm like, it's a nice, nice day today, huh? Yeah, it was a good day. And he's like, what? He takes out his headphones. And I'm like, oh, yeah. You just playing one on one one with your one with yourself? Cool, cool, cool. I'm, I like playing basketball. Too. I'm like don't even know what I'm saying. I'm just like rambling, and um, and I go to him I'm like, hey, um, if you, I would love to. I don't know if you have if you ever uh, again. I'm a pastor and I stumble over my words all the time uh, to do this. And I'm like, hey, I'd love to invite you if you don't have a church home. Uh, I go to this church over here. We'd love to have you sometime. And this guy goes, oh, that's awesome. I'm actually, like, I, I go to this church, and I'm really involved over there. And he starts, like, naming all the things he's involved in. I'm like, oh, dude, that's awesome. That's great. 
And then I left that moment, and I was like, wait a second, God, I felt like I stepped out of faith here for, for this thing, like you put this in front of me, and this guy didn't even, like he goes to church, like he's on our side, what are we doing? Um, and in that moment, I just felt like God was, was telling me, he's like, like not nothing audible, I just kind of felt it, you know, like, it's like, Rob, um, you're not in charge of the response that you get. Like, I'm in charge of the response that I get. Um, what I wanted to see is if you actually, like, wanted to obey me enough to do something that was uncomfortable. And sometimes I feel like we can get irritated if, like, God, I did what you said. Like, I, I invited that person. They said no. Or they said I was weird. Or they, like, whatever. And God is not telling you to manage all of the outcomes. What he's asking you to do is to participate in the obedience. And so what we need to be bold in is to pray that, God, would you give me an opportunity? If you're at school, be like, God, would you give me an opportunity to to, uh, talk to people? I have conversations with with Rachel all the time where she's like, hey, can I tell you about a thing that happened to me at school? I got to talk to this person. I got to invite this person to church. I talked to this person. It turns out we're two Christians and there's not very many Christians. It was really encouraging. And like, I've talked to many of you about a lot of these things. You know what that is? That's, that's God, that's working your muscle of obeying the Lord. That's working your muscle of being bold because how many of you know, you don't just immediately be great at something. You have to work at it. It's not, it's, this is something that it's like a, like you have to fan into flame this thing. And this is what we have to be doing. This is what we have to be doing. So be bold in your invitations. Be bold in your serving. Be bold in your praying. This is the only way that we will see revival in the young adults of Orange County. It's the only way. Like you cannot be, you cannot be passively inside a revival. You, cannot, you will not be passively seeing your friends come to know the Lord. You will not passively yourself grow. You have to have an inciting incident of boldness to reach out and to say, God, would you use me? Would you give me opportunities? And then God will use you if you ask him. It's a dangerous prayer because God often will give you something. This is the only way that we will see growth. This is the only way we'll see change. This will only, like our area, can you imagine what would it be like if there was an army of young adults who were transformed by the love and forgiveness of God that started through the resurrection of Jesus 2,000 years ago? Like life after the resurrection affords this, this incredible opportunity. May we be a people that don't waste it. So my friends... My brothers and sisters here at Cross Point Young Adults, let's be bold. Let's be bold. Would you pray with me?